Welcome to Empowerment Radio. My name is Dr. Friedman, and I'm so glad that you decided to join me. Empowerment Radio is about giving you the insights, tools, and solutions to address some of the most challenging aspects of our daily lives. So sit back, relax, and empower yourself. Welcome to Empowerment Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Friedman, and uh, yeah. You know, I talked about it last time, but I have to mention it again. This is one of probably the most interesting times that we can really look back onto. And I hope in a few months, we look back at all of this with a big sigh of relief. But right now there is certainly tension, stress uh, on a global level, on a level in the community and also on an individual level. And it has a lot to do, of course, with the election and the economy, but it has also to do a lot with the pandemic that is far from over and that just seems to come back, maybe even in a vengeance, maybe even worse than we had before. So let's all wear masks and make sure that we have some social distancing and don't go, you know, just into the oblivion of everything is fine because it's not. Now we all know about COVID that the people that are the most affected health-wise are the elders, people that have pre-existing conditions. Now, but there is another group that is very affected, not necessarily physically, but economically. And these are women. Like a study said that it's twice as likely right now for a woman to lose her job than for a man. And already from every you know, job loss that happened, 54% or more have been women. And women are the ones that are carrying the burden right now of having to juggle the kids at home and the household and still having somehow to help out to make ends meet. There is a lot that right now is happening on the shoulders of women. And it just brings out more the injustice that has been a part of probably most society since ever. The patriarch that has been suppressing women and created this inequality is still alive and kicking, but I think things are changing. And things are changing because Women are no longer just willing to get less paid for the same job or getting overlooked in a promotion or a leading position because they're a woman. And guys that may be less talented or less able are getting the jobs that actually maybe the female colleague would have deserved. Now, one of the reasons why women have not been able to compete is not only that the patriarch has suppressed that, but it's also that women have been consistently undermined in their confidence, consistently have been bombarded with unrealistic expectations, unrealistic ideas of what they should look like and what they should be able to do and what their place is. So confidence was not necessarily something they were spoon fed with. And so I'm really excited that today I have an author who has been specializing based also on her own experience on helping women to build confidence, a solid confidence that actually does last. And for that, I am bringing on my special author uh, and guest, Kate McGinnis, who wrote the book, Confidence Lost, Confidence Found. So Kate, thank you so much for being on Empowerment Radio. Oh, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here and excited about the possibility of being able to help more women. That's why I wrote the book. Now, you are a woman who has been really dealing with, uh, a, you know, confidence loss. Because, you know, when you look at your history, uh, that prompted to write your book because the story started for you not from not having enough confidence because I think you had actually a lot of confidence but then everything fell apart. Tell us a little bit more about that. 
Yes, it was really a series of dominoes that fell and fell and fell. Yes, I had a wonderful job. I had achieved a lot. I was uh, one of the leading women lawyers in Los Angeles. And because of that, I was hired to be the general counsel, which is the lead lawyer for a very, very big company, a Fortune 200 company. And that didn't go as well as I had hoped. Uh, the lead lawyer, chief counsel, sometimes has to say no. And sometimes the executives don't like hearing no. And I said no a bit too often, I guess. And I ended up being very abruptly fired. Just when I thought I was doing very well, all of a sudden, two men walked into my office one day and said, we're putting out a press release before the market opens on Wednesday morning that you're no longer working here. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> a stunning, okay. stunning blow. Uh, and it only got more complicated from there. I had commuted with my husband every day. He was a lawyer too in downtown Los Angeles. So I called him and said, oh, will you please come pick me up? I just got fired. I want to go home. And he said, don't joke. I said, no, I was fired. He said, oh, don't joke. So I finally convinced him and I went home and essentially spent eight months working with him and other very good lawyers negotiating the severance package. Mm -hmm. And I was convinced, oh, well, the best thing really will be to get your severance in annual installments. Thought, well, yeah, this is a big company, a Fortune 200. Sure, this will be safe. Uh, so I thought. And uh, what I did at first was I started writing a novel. I'd always wanted to be a writer. And my only child went to a boarding school uh, in north of Santa Barbara in a beautiful valley, the San Inez Valley. And I thought, well, why am I here in Los Angeles? <laughs> my only kid is up in this beautiful valley. So I moved to the valley and I bought a ranch that was adjacent to a 6,000 acre na nature preserve that could never be developed. And I had this, it wasn't a huge ranch, it was 20 acres, but it was right in the middle of nature. I had red tail hawks circling above me, uh, my rescue dogs, they roamed the ranch, they chased deer, and I had a horse. So it was quite wonderful. And my horse had a goat for companionship. So he was happy too. Uh, and all seemed to be going very well until through a series of mergers and acquisitions, the company that had agreed to pay me severance was acquired. Well, it was acquired by an even bigger company. So that should have been good. But then that company went into bankruptcy and kabam, <laughs> my annual payments disappeared. And I was left with a ranch and a uh, horse and a goat and dogs <laughs> and no severance and a son in college. So mm -hmm. that really was a double hit to my confidence. I had more or less metabolized losing my job, losing the status, but oh, the consolation was having this beautiful lifestyle. And then that got taken away too. And trying to sell a ranch in an economic recession was very difficult. Well, that was not even it, right? I mean, somehow it just tumbled down from there. Oh, yes. No, that's right. It, the story only got worse. <laughs> or more interesting. Now that I look back, I can say uh, it did get more interesting. So I was at that point uh, married to my meditation teacher. And he had been, had spent really most of his life devoted to transcendental meditation. And it turns out the center of transcendental meditation in the US is in a small town in Iowa, Southeast Iowa, 9,000 people. 
half of whom are meditators who's gathered from all over the world. And the other half were pig and soybean farmers. <laughs> So I'm in the middle of this very strange community, and I have to confess, I was not as devoted to my meditation as my then husband was. He started meditating literally seven hours a day. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. a job. <laughs> yeah, well, but it's being hard, hard being married to a man who spends that much time not in his body, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was so heavenly, he was no earthly good. <laughs> and uh, I was waiting for the company that owed me money to come out of bankruptcy. I was paying my bills, I was getting by, I was not in bankruptcy, but mm -hmm. this company was, and they owed a whole lot of people money. And it took four years for the company to come out of bankruptcy. So mm. I was biding my time there in Iowa, figuring out what to do next. And then the marriage fell apart? Oh, yes, the marriage fell apart. It was, um, he was, as he was, a very good man, but no earthly good. And so basically, you came from a high powered job, having it all to going into a hiatus, which wasn't too bad, but the firing was certainly a blow, to not even having the financial security anymore, to not having the companionship in your husband, to being somewhere lost in Iowa. <laughs> so I can imagine your confidence went from a 10 to a two or less. And so you had to somehow find a way to build your confidence. And in some ways you could say, build your identity. And that's what we're gonna talk about after the break because what is actually confidence and how do we lose our confidence? I mean, for you, it was through all of these events, but I think a lot of people lose confidence while still having some kind of maybe familiar or stable uh, life, but still there is always this chipping away on their confidence and what is that? And, what can we do to stop that and rebuild the confidence? So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Hi, Dr. Friedman here. Thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel. If you're interested in learning more about fear and anxiety, here you'll find guided meditations, webinars, and interviews with some of the most renowned experts in the field of empowerment. Delve into the over 230 videos and more to come every week.